Hi folks, welcome to my Pit Retro Journal. I recently did a journal entry on using uh, my QL, my retro uh, hobby computer, as a backup in case my my main system goes down. And it was actually a real problem because I had to write a proposal uh, over the weekend and uh, didn't only have one machine at home because I, I left uh, my, uh, my other laptops were at the office. And everything worked out. My machine didn't crash. But in any case, I sort of explored um, whether I could use this. And I completely forgot about this machine. So this is a Z88. It was um, a machine that came out in February of 1987. It was created by Clive Sinclair under the uh, uh, new company name, uh, uh, Cambridge Computing, he, uh, or Cambridge Computer. He had sold uh, um, Sinclair Research to um, Alan Sugar and Amstrad in 86 for various reasons. Um, the ZX Spectrum was still doing well with the ZX Spectrum. The QL was not doing so well, um, but they had just gone into a second round of release on that. And of course, also the um, in the mid '80s, the, the sort of the home computer market was kind of crashing, um, and so some some uh, some folks didn't survive that. And I think Clive Sinclair's um, focus wasn't necessarily to build the best computers. He really wanted to build things that helped people or change the world. And at, at, the t at that time, he was also working on his electric vehicle, the C5, which ended up being a, a flop. But at the time, he really felt that that was going to be uh, revolutionary. And so he, he wanted to focus his attention on that. And so he had saw the opportunity to get rid of his computer company. And he sold Sinclair Research, which made the ZX80, ZX81, QL, and the Spectrum. Um, I you know, this Now, this particular machine actually was the result of a design that he had way back when he was creating the QL, which I believe was called the Pandora. I have a book that I can demonstrate. I've shown this on my channel before. Uh, it's the, um, it's the uh, Delete um, Design History of Computer Vaporware. And on the back, actually, it was the uh, concept machine for what the QL was actually supposed to be originally like, which was a laptop. And they were working on a, a, a flat screen uh, CRT display. And of course that didn't work out. Um, but so they had this design idea way back in the early eighties. And um, the, um, but they came out with the QL instead. And so when he sold uh, his company to Amstrad, uh, I don't know if, the Z80 was still in, in design phase and he offered that as part of the deal. And Alan Sugar was like, no thanks, because he got rid of the QL and only wanted the Spectrum. Because uh, I can't imagine he kept it from him during the sale and then all of a sudden, two a year later, came out with a brand new machine. Note, it, it, instead of being called ZX8080, he called it the Z88. And also it came out a year earlier in 87, so I'm not sure the name history on that. Um, but it was one of the, um, I mean, back then you really didn't have that many portables uh, and they were expensive. And so this was a very, I was like, it was 199 pounds, British pounds. And so that was pretty inexpensive. Works on four uh, AA batteries. Um, came with, uh, this was the manual it came with. A uh, pretty nice manual. Um, it has, um, built in uh, BBC basic and it uses a, 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 a set of uh, applications like the QL for word processing and spreadsheet. And again, it seems to be based off of a, a BBC suite. Um, so at that point, not having Sinclair research anymore, it seemed like they borrowed a lot from uh, uh, existing, uh, stand, uh, existing uh, uh, software. Um, but yeah, so uh, I, completely forgot that I had this, or I didn't forget I had this, I didn't think about this in terms of uh, a, another backup machine to do my uh, word processing on. I will say that it has an 8 uh, Super LC, super Twist LCD, which is was pretty great uh, back in the day from the more passive LCDs. Um, 
and I'm going to demo to you what this looks like, but uh, and I'll zoom in on the screen. But yeah, it was, it was very light. It had actually a nice keyboard, very soft to the touch. Um, built in uh, the operating system was Oz. It was not necessarily multitasking, but task switching, just like uh, the multi finder on the Mac. You could suspend stuff in the background. Yeah, I guess that had built in basic and a, and a file manager. It used um, RAM, used cartridges. It has three cartridge slots here at the bottom, right there, right here, here, and here. Um, and um, if I can move this up a little bit. So, right here, here, and here. And um, it could also um, uh, write to EEPROM. So, it actually had a built in. EEPROM programmer, uh, reasonable programmer or read-only memory, so it could actually burn or uh, on an EEPROM. Uh, I don't know. I can think you still had to erase it using UV light, but yeah, that was pretty cool that it had that built in um, and lasted 20 hours on four AA batteries, which I've got some in there now. I actually have some rechargeable ones in there, and um, yeah, pretty handy. I actually use this. Um, uh, in the day. In fact, one of the things this had was, uh, uh, they, so the one really smart thing they did is they actually had a uh, uh, a package that allowed you to uh, go between the Z80 and the Macintosh, and it actually allowed for the it, its internal uh, editor, which was called Pipe Dream, to uh, translate between Pipe Dream and the um, Mac Write. It also had uh, Pipe Dream. Pipe Dream was this sort of combination word processor spreadsheet. And so you could also take Pipe Dream and turn it, turn it into these WKS files, which were compatible with Excel and other spreadsheet programs. But yeah, so you could, uh, so this was a little program that ran on the Macintosh and you plugged in a cable between uh, its. So the um, T88 has a nine pin serial port standard and you could plug that into the Macs. In fact, I think they have, um, there's a picture of it. Yeah, here you go. So it kind of gives you an idea of the, um, the this is what the Mac Zero reports look like. And this is for a Plus SE or, or Mac 2. Uh, and again, the the, uh, the first laptops, the, well, the Mac Portable and the first PowerBook came out in 1991. So this was uh, ahead of... Uh, you know that was this, so. This was way before then. So this made actually a nice um, uh, augmented a Macintosh for those that um, you know wanted to have the portable experience. Uh, uh, this this was a nice had a nice sleek design, a very quiet keyboard, and could be connected easily to the Macintosh with, with software. Um, the um, Precursors to this that look very similar are the T the Tandy Model 100, which came out in 83, and the 200, uh, which came out in either 84 or 85. Um, they didn't have the built-in suite of applications. Th this could have as much as 4 megabytes of RAM. Uh, I have a 128K cartridge in here, so this had way more memory that, um, than a, t a Tandy 100 or 200 could have. Uh, I think the screen was better, and it had just more um, applications that you could... Uh, uh, that were built in the ROM, and it was a bit more professional. I, it came out four years after, three or four years afterwards. Um, but yeah, so this was sort of in the early days of laptops, and this was um, the the end product of the well, I think what they called the Pandora project, which was in which manifested itself originally as as um, this, uh, this this picture of this uh, laptop looking beast. Which here it says, um, I'm not sure where, yeah, this was 8283 when uh, they were designing the QL, so this was a mock up prototype. Um, it also came with a uh, nice carrying case, uh, fake leather. Um, and uh, yeah, so what I wanted to do is um, just demonstrate this a bit. Uh, all right, so here it is, um, the Z88 turned on. Now I've adjusted the contrast. Um, you can see there's actually a knob. I'll demonstrate to you uh, how, how you can adjust it. Hopefully I can get it back to what I have it at. But you can, uh, well, it's a wheel here on the side, so you can really adjust it 
as dark as possible. That's the printable screen area. Um, but um, it's, it uses a, a reflection of light, so I tried to add a, a pretty good light source to show you the best possible um, image. And it, it, it spans the whole uh, screen area. So you've got your context menus here. And I'll go through some of the apps. You have um, uh, Diary, uh, Pipe Dream, Basic, Calculator, Calendar, Clock, Alarm, Filer, uh, Printer, Editor, uh, Panel, Terminal Program, uh, Import, Export. And then after that, uh, if you have any uh, uh, cartridges plugged in, you'd have additional extra stuff. But those are the, the main ones that come with the operating system. So um, uh, what I'll show you is uh, Pipe Dream, uh, which is sort of this combined editor uh, word processor. It's a what you see is what you get word processor. It's a it's a little funky, but um, uh, to whom it may concern, comma. Oops, it's hard to type sideways. How? R, and then I can add boldface. So how do we do that is there's a um, control character. So P, B, R, U. And it actually will, th will, will draw in the control characters. But when you move off the line, it'll actually uh, boldface them for you. So it's kind of weird how it does that. You can also do underlines if you want. Uh, you can go up to the... Uh, there is a there are commands to get to the end of the line. Uh, so I want to uh, yeah. So that ends it, and then I can say how are you, and I can go um, P U today, and then if I move off of that, you'll see that. Um, you is bold-faced and today is underlined. Uh, I should probably... Uh... So there is a way to get to the end of the line. i just forgotten what that is. Uh, there are commands for that. I don't know if it's shift. That goes to the end of each word. I want to add a question mark. Yeah. And so, yeah. And so as you, as you move through, you have your editor. This can also act as a word processor. Um, and... Uh, um, it, again, with this software that I uh, showed earlier, um, you can then transfer things to the uh, Macintosh, and it actually uses MacWrite. And if you're doing Excel stuff, it uses um, uh, WKS files. And you can you can see right here that it's already doing this as as this integrated word processor, but also already has the columns for the spreadsheet. So it's kind of interesting. Anyway, that's the word processor, and uh, yeah, it's it's actually the keyboard's really nice. It's much nicer than the QL's keyboard, um, and uh, with eight lines, you know, I think the reason that I I didn't uh, um, use this as my backup is because I just I don't have a Mac and I don't have an easy way to transfer these files to a Mac write document that I can convert. Whereas uh, what I don't know is if if the um, this machine has a SD card reader. If it does, it, it makes everything much simpler because then it's just format. But um, but certainly for a, as a portable, it's it's nice and light and move. You can move around. Of course, now you know modern uh, modern machines, modern portables are, are nice and light and have long battery life. This is really more like a, a you know an early version of an iPad, I guess, is the best way to look at this. But uh, so yeah, Pipe Dream is definitely a, a, a powerful. Uh, a word processor and spreadsheet on in one and uh, what's nice about this is if I use the uh, menu uh, uh, index key um, it actually brings me back to this now I can open something else so let me open basic and so now I'm in basic and I can I can write a basic program 10 print This is BBC Basic, and if I'm just uh, 20, oops, 
go to 10 R U N and we have our basic program and I think you hit escape to break it yep and if I want to do uh, so can I edit this edits 10 I don't know BBC basic nope how do you edit 10 I don't know uh, menu basic has no topics <laughs> is it ed is there maybe you just type edit no so certainly i can list it i mean i can do the old school way of just re but there's got to be a way to uh, uh, enter into edit mode <clears throat> if not i could just retype the command print i just haven't used the basic in here enough now it doesn't have um what's uh i guess it's all capital i was doing shifts and uh, lower uh Uh, it doesn't do graphics, unfortunately, although it does have the ability to um, call machine code. So you might be able to load machine code and then address the pixel area because you could do some cool stuff with that. Definitely uh, sideways moving games uh, would be pretty easy to do on this. Uh, what's nice, though, about this is if I hit index, I have um, both um, programs still running. I want to make sure that I don't... Uh... It's easy to move the, there we go. I still, I have both programs running. I've got basic and pipe dream. So if I go over, go back to pipe dream, I'm back to where I was. So it's, it's like the multi finder in terms of how it did multitasking. It's not true multitasking like for, well, I mean, we can give this a try. So if I go back to index and go to basic, and uh, type run if i say index yeah so it will not give back the processor while i'm doing that i need to be broken out of this um so it needs to be in wait uh, and then i can type index and i can get back into uh, my other uh, editor <clears throat> but still a pr pretty cool um uh, system uh it was 199 pounds new. I think I bought it for 99. Yeah, I bought it for 99 dollars, which is pretty cool. So the other thing it has built in here, which is kind of nice, is the. Um, so I mean, uh, so this is uh, the menu for Pipe Dream. So index. If I go, uh, there is the terminal program. Yeah, and this is just. Uh, assume if I have a modem on there, I would get AT commands. Or if I'm hooking this up to a dumb terminal, I can, um, and what do I have for commands? Uh, just tells me, uh, I can do function keys and cursor left, right, up and down. So what I don't know is if, uh, if this would let me, uh, um, if it does VT100 or whatnot. Um, I guess I can check that out uh, really quickly. I'll put it in the comments to see what, kind of uh, terminal it emulates but filer i assume this lets you see what's on your uh, catalog eprom catalog files i do have an eprom on here can i satisfy request all right uh, can i catalog files uh no i want to list them say fetch copy rename uh, fetch from Eprom. So you have to actually tell it. Yeah. Um, select directory. That's what I want. Now, how about if I just hit return? No. Huh? I'll select device. Yep. Tree copy, name match. Uh, it doesn't actually uh, save to Eprom. So, select directory, uh, select device. So RAM zero. So, that, so I have, again, 128K of RAM in here, but it must be, um, well, the RAM will erase itself because it's just an extension to memory. Uh, it's like a RAM disk. Uh, select device. Yep, now I've already done that. 
I'm sorry, I'm sure I'm moving this around and it's not centered, so. But yeah, uh, back to index. Clock and alarm are kind of boring. Uh, what's panel? Is that a way to... Uh... Oh yeah, so this is how you can adjust things. Um, so these are like basic uh, timeout in minutes is five, so I assume this goes to sleep, which is pretty cool. And you auto repeat rate, etc. So this is for cursor. What about uh, files load? Oh, you can specify. Okay, back to index. Now it has three, so it keeps everything you have open. That's pretty cool. Uh, import, export, uh, print editor, filer. I've already done the filer. Yeah, so. Uh, it has a, I mean, the calculator is probably going to be pretty basic stuff. Yeah, so it's just a basic calculator. Uh, but it keeps it open. And so now I have term, uh, did not keep the calculator open. So it must, oh, actually, it tells you right here, VT52 terminal emulator. So, in any case, uh, a pretty useful, uh, a tool that has a lot of built in stuff, uh, uh, from scratch. In other words, you don't have to buy a lot of software, and uh, it was pretty handy to use, and Pipe Dream was actually pretty good. I actually used this with my Mac 2 SI as my portable before the, the Macintosh Power uh, books came out in, in the early 90s, and they were so expensive. I would have never gotten one. But so this was pretty handy. And again, I, I like the fact that it kind of matched the QL, although I never used it with the QL, so I, I don't have any experience hooking it up to the QL. Uh, the one thing I tried is that the this has a, a power jack and it didn't work, so I don't know why it works with batteries. So it's just got to be a connection problem. But um, in any case, I'll, I'll end there. This is the Z88. I'll do more uh, in the summer. I'll look to see if I think I did check and there are no SD card readers, which would be nice to have. Um, but I will check to play around with some software and the fact that it has an EPROM, the ability to program EPROMs. Uh, now they might be very specific ones, so. Um, but it would be kind of cool to experiment, experiment with that as well in the future. So the Z88 is a, another rare beast that I own, and i uh, really happy that I, I got it back in the early 90s and uh, was uh, used it after I finished with the QL and transitioned to the Mac. I used it for a while as well. So I'll end there. Uh, thanks for joining me today, and I'll see you soon.